New Dockyard, second iteration of the Concealed Maneuvers battle type and other news. Close this 12.7. Let's talk about the main features of 12.7. Lucian. This was the thing. The, haven't they revamped Lucian twice now? I think they revamped it twice. Once or twice. They have completely re re yeah re re reworked it. They had one concept for it which was terrible. Then they threw in another one which also sounded iffy. And then I think they changed it in another time. And I don't even remember what the the third iteration of this. It's some isn't it some gun focused thing now? Some sort of farming ship. I don't remember. It it, it was wonky though. Was this the thing that got the Sebastopol here? The, the super long cooldown, long heal. I think this was the one, yeah. It's a sh dockyard ship. Okay, 35 stages, 30 can be completed. Yeah, damn. Concealed maneuvers. Okay. In update 12.7, temporary battle type concealed maneuvers, which first appeared in update 12.6, links to DB will be available again. Its main purpose is to test new mechanics for aircraft carrier squadrons, the airdrop sea mines, and the smoke curtain generator. In this iteration, it will be possible to test the mechanics of on two aircraft carriers that were previously removed from game, Taiho and Essex. Dude, I, on one hand, I'm glad to see the return of Taiho and Essex, like legendary ships. Um... On the other hand, these are ships I used to play, and seeing them now in this dumbed-down rework CV iteration, it, it kind of hurts, man. Kind of hurts. Kind of hurts. And there is a certain level of comedy involved in the Taiho being re-added to the game. Because for those who aren't aware, Taiho blew itself up it basically detonated it got hit i think by was it one bomb or one torpedo and then uh, because the dcp was so shit they didn't know to, how to handle the dcp because hygiene carrier uh they spread the the fuel vapors all around the ship and then it ignited and the entire thing detonated so you get a ship with that history added into world of warships where it's immune to fires and can't detonate <laughs> it's like what like, like, sometimes Wargaming's reality and actual reality really fucking clashes with each other. Like, really fucking clashes with each other. So, and oh yeah, it was I think it was a submarine torpedo that hit it as well. And now it's got automated ASW as well. <laughs> it's like, Wargaming's hand-holding reality versus the actual reality. Sometimes it really, like, it, it's in a heavy fucking crossroads. Yeah, it's pretty funny in that sense. So in that sense, it's fun to see the Taiho come back. This Taiho really highlights how dumb Wargaming CV design is compared to what it actually was. And S6. Battles will be held in a 9x9 format on tier 9 to 10 ships. You will be able to enter battle on Taiho and Essex as well as other aircraft carriers. Okay. The Essex bombers will be able to summon a special airstrike that deploys a minefield. As far as their characteristics, they are similar to Midway's research about dive bombers. The carriers also armed with Midway's stock torpedo bombers with the torpedo site settings from Lexington, as well as Midway's stock attack aircraft equipped with tiny tin rockets and faster sight narrowing. Faster sight narrowing. Okay. Essex bombers will be able to summon a special airstrike. Wait, so, wait, 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 so the bombs themselves don't deploy the, the minefield. They summon another squadron that deploys the airfield. So, you summon a minion that casts a spell. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I activate my trap card, summon minefield. <laughs> I cast magnetic mines upon it. Oh man. Oh man. <laughs> planes within planes within planes interlinked. Yep. Okay, I thank your craft. Tiny Tim Tiny Tims. Torpedoes. 
Torpedoes in payload, two. Size of a tackling flight, two. So four. Four torps. And the dive bombers. Interesting. How much mana does it cost to cast minefield? I think it's kind of broken. They have unlimited mana. Iho's tactical attack aircraft will be equipped with smoke curtain generator. They are armed with rockets from Shikoku attack aircraft, but with reduced damage. The ship also has stock Hakuri torpedo bombers with reduced cruising speed and Hakuri research will dive bombers with an increased number of aircraft on deck. Taiyo's damage focus was shifted from torpedo bombers to the other squadrons compared to Hakuri. Okay. Shifted. Not turned downgraded. Shifted. Interesting. Mm. Okay. Torpedo bombers, nine three three torps. Torpedo is payload one. Size of attacking flight two. So it's pretty standard that. Bombs in payload one. Three bombs. Six point eight k. Planes launching planes, meeting planes in the air to call in more planes. What a time to be alive. Yep. In the new iteration of concealed maneuvers, it will be possible to go into battle at the helm of submarines. We've added the ability for them to interact with minefields. Each mine will have an underwater tether attached to it, and upon contact with it, the mine will explode and cause damage to the submarine. The amount of damage as well as the probability of causing critical damage will depend on the distance between the submarine and the mine. Whoa! Minefields are actually working as subs? I like that. But how in God's name is this coding going to handle this? I have so little faith in this in this fucking coding. I have so little faith in this. Underwater tether mechanics. Oh boy. There was they did post by the way an update about the minefields. We should look at that while we're looking at this since it's kind of re relevant. Some they did a Q&A somewhere on on some Discord uh that I want to look at. Ranked Battles. In update 12.7, the 13th season of Ranked Battles will start. The battles will be held 6 vs 6 format on tier 8 ships. And tier 9 ships. Oh shit, you can grind. Oh, we're going to play ranked again, boys. You can grind tier 8s and 9s. Pog. Pog. I bet. I'm thinking this ranked season was probably fucking dead. I wonder if there's any numbers on how much, how many, how much people played ranked this season. But you want to bet there was fucking dead as hell. Like probably one of the most dead season is the dead seasons in ages. Yeah, it's gonna be Sil silver is gonna build a golden league again, chat. That's where we're gonna hang out. Silver is gonna be the golden league. No subs and no CVs. Holy shit, we're gonna play so much silver. Yeah, we're back. We're rank We're ranked mains again, boys. Back to ranked mains. In the 13th season, rule for retaining star in case of a defeat. It's the same for all leagues, only the first player by experience earned will retain the star. Okay. 22nd season of Clan Battles and Anaconda will start on 21st. Battles will be held on the 7 vs 7 tier 10 ships. Super ships! Yay! Okay, aircraft carriers and subs are still banned. Bro, I wish Wargaming would just throw fucking subs and CVs into, into fucking Clan Battles so we could see how quickly that entire league would collapse when that dog shit is added upon all these players who have been playing only Clan Battles to avoid said dog shit. I would want to see just how quickly would their entire fucking Clan structure collapse if the same shit that they put upon us in randoms would be put upon the people in Clan Battles. It would be the biggest fucking exodus of skilled players we have seen in, in fucking ages, man. It would be absolutely hilarious, though. No more than one super ship per team. Okay, so people are gonna run Conde, most likely. Conde or maybe Annapolis, but probably Conde. Conde is still so fucking hilariously broken. I'm working for some reason thinks it's fine. So we'll share more details about the climate and the additional restrictions at a later date. Changes to ranked and clan. Tokens. Ranked and clan tokens will be removed from the game and exchanged for steel. Okay, conversion rate. Fair enough. 
Camouflage is previously available for these tokens will be available for steel. I guess people weren't too interested in buying them, Lamal. The cost of these camouflages will be revised according to the exchange rate. Camouflage is available for free tokens of 10 ranks will cost 6,000 steel. So if you haven't had a chance to purchase camouflage of tokens, you will have the opportunity to get them for steel in this update. Okay. We'll share more details about what will be the new composition of rewards and clan rank battles at a later date. Insignia selection update. Tab with patches and emblems have been updated. There will be a tab with a patch designer in which colors the players will be able to create their own patch by combining different available elements. Wow. Where well, well, I for one foresee absolutely no issues with this one. You will be able to choose the symbol, shape, and color of the edges, as well as customize the background color and texture. The ability to generate a random patch for the available elements. Okay, wait. Symbol, shape, and color of the edges. How much shape control does this give us? Hmm. There's going to be so many dicks. There's going to be so many dicks. There have never been more dicks than there's going to be dicks in this game. Holy shit. I hope there's a, a submarine shape. I would like to add the submarine shape next to two mine shapes. Perhaps it could be launching a torpedo as well. That sounds pretty good. What do you think? Categorization of symbols, patches, and emblems has been added. In addition, we improved rendering technology. Patches, including existence and ones, will look more realistic. Nice. Unique upgrades. Oh shit, they're coming now, huh? Chitro, AP shells with ballistic tip, 6 slot, maximum AP shell damage 10%, maximum dispersion made by shells minus 7, number of consumable charges minus 7. 6 slots, so you're tra trading 12% reload, for 10% AP shell damage and better dispersion. That, already this trade I wouldn't be sure about, but trading away consumable. That's pretty bad. That is pretty bad. Like, if it was just this thing here, I'd be really tempted. Like, this could, this could, this would probably translate to an increase. You'd lose some HE damage, especially against DDs you're radaring, but in return, better dispersion and more AP damage. Yeah, I would probably run it if it was just this thing. This this sounds interesting, but minus one consumables. Your radar is really good because you got stealth radar. You cycle for heals pretty quickly in Petra generally because you're you're in there tanking. Uh, the Hydra is pretty decent as well, but not that big of a deal. Um, I don't. I can't really recommend it. Like you just get first blood with Kuznetsov. Mm. I think the, 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 this this is such a big negative. On one hand, you don't lose, you get rid of the third traverse penalty because Petro has pretty slow third traverse. It doesn't affect it too much because of three sixty degree turrets though. But it would be interesting to try because the dispersion means that Petro becomes more effective at range as well, which means less reason to cycle consumables as quickly i don't know hmm it's interesting i'll give it that it's interesting i, I can't give a definitive answer on this one until i've tried it how, how big of a deal does the seven percent do but oh losing it's still losing a consumable is big Hmm. Aerodynamic torpedo stabilizers. Torpedo H bombers, HP 50, and torpedo damage, 10%. Torpedo arming distance, minus 10%. Wait, isn't that just buffs? That's just buffs. Wait, what the fuck? There's no downside. Less arming distance? That's good. 10% damage? That's great. HP 50, that's fantastic. 
It's carriers, I guess. Where's the downside? MVR Torps aren't as nutty as... Uh, but I mean, they're still pretty good, aren't they? No fucking downside, though. Interesting. MVR want to use rockets and bombs? Aren't MVR Torps the best against DDs already? Are you sure about this, Kawai? I'm pretty sure these things are like one of the best torps against DDs because they're so hard to evade. And now they're gonna be even nuttier. Don't they have. Doesn't MVR have like really fast torps? Where the fuck did I get the details on it? Maximum drivers. Aren't they really a bowler? I remember these things being the most Ebola part about the Richthofen. I mean, Richthofen sucks if you're in a Moskva or something, but I remember the Torp Bombers are fucking nasty if you're playing a DD. Because they're so hard to evade. You want? Jesus. Here we go. Yeah, these things did 55 knots. Without any buffs. That's what I remember. That's fucking dented as hell. Fifty-five fucking knots. And you could drop, like, what was it, three of these on the side. You drop three of these on the side of a DD. And then the time it takes to evade, he comes in for another drop and cross drops you. And he, even, if, even if he doesn't cross drop you, they're fucking a ball at the dodge because they're so fucking fast. And this thing will make you arm them faster and they will do more damage. No, this seems really a ball. This seems really a ball. For the first two weeks of version 12.7, a special tab will be available in the armor where you can exchange certain tier 5 to 10 premium and special ships for a significant discount on the purchase of other premium and special ships with the balloons. What? Rare ships that are difficult or impossible to obtain are exchanged for a larger discount. If the exchange ship offers a discount greater than the value of the purchase ship, the exchange takes place without additional payment. The difference in value is not compensated. Wait, what? This seems like a scam. This is going to be a scam and a half, I think. Interesting. I, I want to see what kind of rates they're going to offer. This is going to be some fucking... Um, what is it called? When, when, uh, uh, pawn shop. This is going to be some pawn shop levels of fucking trades. Uh, best I can offer is 20 dubs. Sorry. But, it, but, but it's a Georgia. Best I can offer is... Okay, 22 dubs. Best I can do. <laughs> Other improvements and changes. I did a system of recommended upgrades for each ship. Similar to commander skills, such upgrades will be marked with a special symbol in the UI. Also added a button to purchase and install all recommended upgrades in three slots at once. Oh boy. Battle type selection screen has been updated. Permanent battle types are displayed at the top, while temporary and seasonal battle types are displayed at the bottom. Added new descriptions, updating existing descriptions for all battle types that are displayed when clicking the information button. Added tooltips for certain battle types that pop up when hovering over the battle icon, showing limits on tier ship types and specific ships. Time until the end of battle. Okay, this is good. More information is always good. Hmm. New content. The following content will be added. Permanent camos. Free wind for Numancia and adventure for Lefantas. Okay, this thing looks really cool. 
I, I kind of don't like this thing, though. I wish it was more sailboat themed. I don't like this thing. This, if they, this shit was gone and it was more like a sail somewhere here to give it more of that sailboat uh, aesthetic, I would like it more. Not that big of a fan of this. Oh, this is pretty cool as well. I'm not sure about uh, what I think about the red bow, though. I'm not sure what I think about this. And maybe this, I'm not that big a fan of this. I think the pure wooden hull all the way through would have looked much better. I do like the look of the wood otherwise, but uh, yeah, I don't know. This and the turrets are a bit iffy. Navigator, treasures, patch, and flag. Commander Fyodor Ushikov, USSR ships. Fyodor Ushikov flag. Oh boy. National flag of Uruguay. Oh shit. It's like a Finnish flag that tripped. Okay, Uruguay gotta be mad. Added premium container flags from which you can get 97 different cosmetics flags with 100% probability. In case you already have all flags from the container, you will receive 15,000 coal. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Now, where was that? Uh... Can someone give me that Discord? I think I found it. I found it. They 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 posted this. I think I posted. I assume this is an official wargaming Q and A. I think this is an official Q and A where they talk about the bombs. And here they say that does everyone see the same minefield or does every minefield support differently for each player? Everyone sees the same mine. So that theory that guy had about separate minefields is wrong. But. If everyone sees the same minefield, we're going to do a lot of testing on how exactly you can clear it for each other. Because it seemed really iffy, the whole uh, the mine clearing consistency. Unless Wargaming is wrong, unless Wargaming is lying. All, both are options, but we'll see. Consider them as very weak stationary torpedoes. People aren't seeing different torpedoes than someone else. Okay. If you blow up mines with your death charges, those mines will be gone for everyone. Okay, that's a very bold statement. That should be very easy to verify once once it hits live. Well, well we're, we're going to test that a lot. For some reason, Wargaming didn't allow people to enter training rooms on PTS, so I couldn't test things the way I wanted it. But hopefully when it hits, once it hits live, you can bring them to training room and actually do some real testing. CVs can get completely boxed in by having a minefield dropped on them. It takes 40 seconds for the mines to activate. If you're a CV and you see an enemy squadron equipped in mines on way, all you have to do is set your autopilot literally anywhere. Okay, the problem here is that the average CV player doesn't look at the map and doesn't know how to move their ship and generally sits still the entire match without any awareness. So, yeah. This is going to get a lot of CV skill. Which is brilliant because CVs that are fucking bad enough to not pay attention to shit like this deserve to die. So, th double thumbs up, I guess. Something good coming out of this. On the other hand, CV probably won't move, so he won't even eat any of the mines. He's just going to sit still for the full three minutes, and the mines are just going to surround him, and he's going to be like, whatever, lol, I don't need to move. But when CV has to move to avoid mines, I'm vulnerable to battleships. Who the fuck wrote these questions? Some CV may instantly panic, because he's going to be forced to move in his carrier, and he panicked. He's going to be forced to move his airfield, and he panicked, like instant panic. Wow. It's gotta be seen. Submarines are not affected by mines. Submarines can and will strike mines if they are on a surface or at periscope. Also, we're planning to attach chains. Oh, this was all oh, this. So this this Q and A is before this devlog, because this devlog mentioned the tethers that they're attaching. So subs will be affected by them. Mine minefields will make the game more passive. Absolutely, this is a possibility. No, it's a guarantee. But keep in mind that the current iteration can drop three sets of mines the entire game with rather long cooldown between deployments. That doesn't change the fact that it's going to make it more passive. Personally, my estimation is that the most effective use of, my, of a minefield is to place it slightly behind an enemy that is being pushed, forcing them to stand and fight or have a slow retreat through the minefield. So in other words, people are not going to put themselves in that position anymore because the risk of being boxed in with a minefield being dropped behind you is too large, so people are going to play even more passive. 
more passive, of course. Like, like all of the and the counterplay to all of these situations is to play more passive. That's what been the counterplay to subs. Run away. Counterplay to CVs. Don't go anywhere alone. Group up with your team. Blob up in spawn. Play more passive. The the uh, the counterplay to all of these fucking additions that Wargaming had is always being more passive. And any argument towards that is just fucking retarded. C server, yeah. You fuck pushing in. Like, imagine you push in a bit, and then a CV pops up and drops a minefield. Like, you're just slowing down to juke, and then a CV drops a minefield behind you. Behind you. Now you're forced to go forward. You can't reverse. You're forced to go forward and, like, turn out and get out. It's... No, you're just going to play more passive to avoid that situation. Mines will affect destroyers the most. Currently, the most effective way to remove a minefield is to drop deck mount and death charges. The blast rate is huge from deck mounting and can often clear an entire field with one press of the cheeky. I myself tested on PTS, but I could charge a DD for a minefield at max speed and not take it. I could not! But even a few speed and course adjustment let you dodge pretty easily. Add death charges to it, and DDs really don't have much trouble with it. Except the part where they have to slow down and use their ASW, and god forbid if they get spotted in it, they're really fucked. It's... And I mean, you can minefield camps. Just dodge, I guess. Just dodge. Like, it, I feel like this doesn't take into account um, that you're gonna get spotted when you try to clear them as well. Of course a minefield in itself isn't gonna be a problem, but it's kind of like saying uh, if, if, you, if you can just run down the, the, the submarine, you can actually drop death charges on him. Yeah, but the problem isn't just the sub. The problem is hunting him down while being spotted and focus fired by the entire team. And now you have another issue, which is clearing a minefield while being spotted and focus fired by the entire enemy team. Like, same thing as, as a CV, CV drop. Like, many CV drops can be somewhat mitigated by angling against them. The problem is, most of the time when a CV drops you, everyone is also shooting you. So you can't just angle against them because you get fucking crossfired. This is... This is looking at it as if it's a fucking one versus one situation, but the game is almost never in a one versus one situation. It's a, it's a narrow scope on the situation. It's, it's dented. Why are you adding mines anyway? Our goal with mines is to create a new tactical mechanic that fits our gameplay. What fucking part of it fits the gameplay? We also want to bring back the odd tier CV designs for, uh, for a long time. We've also wanted to bring back the odd tier CV designs for a long time, and the community has been clamoring for Essex and Taihos to return. They have? So we decided pulling power out of their main squadrons and putting them into more support utility mechanics was the right way to do it. Smoke screens and an area denial weapon are both ways of affecting the battle outside of direct damage application, and we feel that is a good direction for a new mechanic. But the problem is, CVs already had massive utility because of spotting that you refuse to touch. Wargaming refuses to touch plane spotting, which is the most, the strongest utility tool in the entire game. They can spot any ship anywhere. They can force stealthy ships to use consumables just to avoid that spotting. They can deny caps. They can stop pushes. They can deny flanking moves. They, they already have all this utility. And now giving them more utility is... is Fucking baffling, man. What about the fucking community clamoring for the removal of submarines? Or sub the community clamoring for the removal of plane spotting? Should I've heard a lot more clamoring about that than I've heard about fucking, oh, where is Essex and Taiha? Will CV auto ASW work on minefields? That is the plan, yes. We're not 100% sure what the optimal method is or how this should occur, but that's why we are doing the concealed maneuvers testing. We're looking at multiple ways to approach it, so be on lookout for changes announced in the devlog to track the direction of this. But you want to see that they're going to implement hedgehogs or something and they're going to put it on CVs first. <laughs> just, just so CVs don't get fucked by mines. You want to fucking bet? You want to fucking bet, man. Let's imagine that the player base asks for CVs. Yep, let's imagine. Let's imagine that what the community has been clamoring for the most isn't submarine changes or CV changes, but more CVs. Actually. Actually. 
I'd really like to like to have a talk with this fucking quiet s s silent majority because I have to say the silent majority really doesn't see eye to eye with me very often these days. They really have very different opinions on on the game than I do.